Paul Shearer sitting, sitting next to me. He's the, he's the director and, and producer of, of the Invisible Village Theater. I'm guilty. How many people here are really actors? I know who he is. Every last one of them. No, I know Ray. Ray's not an actor. Just, all right, we're going to move forward. None of us are real actors. <laughs> But we're going to move forward with that well, comment. Well, Linda, I, I'm sorry to say, but I know I don't know. All right, uh, Monica, please kill the call. Thank you. Um, that was inappropriate. They are actors. And just because one may not consider one a professional actor does not mean that they are not actors. And I take that as a personal offense because I am also an actor. So let's not say that, please. We are actors. And anybody here that doesn't think they are, then they must be smoking the pipe. But anyway, I apologize for that. Uh, real quickly, this is for Jim. And um, please, no side conversations. We are live. Uh, Jim, can you quickly tell us the purpose? And we only have about a minute and a half, I'm supposing, or three minutes. Give us a quick rundown of what the purpose of what we're doing here, what, you, what your plays were. And it's, I imagine it's something to do with fighting stigma and showing how people go through things in life. Can you give us a quick? Rundown. Yeah, very much so. First of all, uh, I'd like to tell the audience that we're going to be live at uh, the Rex Theater in Southside, 1602 Carson Street, on Monday, May 18th. Uh, the show starts at 7:30. Doors open at 6:30. Um, yeah, it's. I think it actually serves two purposes. Out. Um, the one you mentioned, uh, we do want to be. You know, there probably is no population that's greater or more mischaracterized than the f folks with mental health issues. So. You know, one of the main issues, one of the main things that keeps coming up is that if somebody indicates there is a, there's a mental illness, then everybody runs to the worst case scenario. You know, it's mm. so like if you know with physical illness, if you say I'm sick, that people don't go, oh boy, you must have cancer. Oh, she's crazy. Uh, you know, mental illness runs a gamut from you know temporary depression, maybe after a grieving situation, to uh, you know to the serious axis one diagnosis, and everywhere in between. So. You know, it's probably something, you know, everybody's experienced some mental illness uh, in the course of their lives. You know, lover leaves you or death in the family, something, you know, can leave you in a depression, although it's temporary. Um, the, the symptoms, though, then are, um, in fact, part of, you know, being, uh, having a mental health problem. Um, the other thing is that it's a, it seems to be a very effective uh, rehab um, program, a psychiatric <laughs> rehab program. Um, I generally say it's kind of complicated to say why, but mainly it is that, um, you know, the things that constitute psychiatric rehabilitation, which is a very difficult thing, um, are very similar to what it, what it is to, to, to be an actor. You know, it's kind of maintaining a character, developing right. character and role. The, the two definitions of the word acting actually are being in motion and taking on character. That's true. And both of those things are, you know, very much a, a part of what psychiatric rehab is about. Well, Jim, I, I hate to cut you short, but you have a piece of work to do. You have to answer that call. So if you could say caller number one, you know what to caller do. Caller number one? Or actually, the second number call. Two. Number two. Caller number two, can you speak? Yeah, this is Glenn. How you doing, Glenn? Yeah, Glenn. Don't remember, remember me, Glenn? Jim Walsh, this is Glenn. Glenn. Know. We know Glenn I know. Sills. I know Glenn very well. How are you, buddy? Good to hear from you. Hey, I'm good to see you. I hope you're doing good. Well, what did you think about the show? I think about the, sh the show's good. I want to know, can I, get, can I get back in it or I can't? Right, Glenn, by the way, to the audience who wouldn't know, Glenn is a past performer of the Invisible Village, which has been uh, basically, I think, 17 years. 17 I think years. Um, we've, been, we've been working, which might make us the third longest running theater project in Pittsburgh, by the way. Well, so, um, Glenn, yeah, of course, we'd be glad to have you back. Okay, uh, I'll get information on, on Wednesday. All right, well, listen, Glenn. Do me a favor, you have my phone number, but don't say it on TV, but give me a call on my cell phone within the next couple of days and, and also try to call Jim. And in the meantime, we gotta close down because we only have five minutes and I got a little bit of BS to do, so don't hang up. I mean, I mean we, gotta, we gotta hang up the phone call, but keep watching the show. And you have a nice night, Glenn, okay? See you, Glenn, nice talking to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Glenn. All right, we're going to... Um, 
move so, on. So for the listeners, could you give the dates we're going to be at the Rex Theater and in, in the time? Thank you, Chris. Yes, we're going to be there uh, May 18th. That's a Monday evening, May 18th. At uh, the show starts at 7:30. Doors open at 6:30. The show is free, and uh, the public is certainly invited and welcome. All right. Well, um, real Maybe quickly, you said it's free. You might have a thousand people there. That's true. It's free and it's <laughs> nonprofit. All right. Real quickly, we only have about 38 seconds. Give us 38 seconds worth of the Flo Rice tribute. In love and memory of Lois Floyd Rice. Flo, as she was known to her friends, always saw the talent in people, especially in children. Her journey started as a young child singing in the choir at her church, as well as the streets of Chicago. With a strong love for the Lord and a gift of prophecy, even at a young age, Flo saw the beauty in people. She attended Phillips High School and was a majorette and often performed in the Bud Billiken Parade. At the age of 26, she lost her arm working in a plastic factory but she did not let that keep her from fulfilling her dreams and purpose to empower young people and those around her. As a single mother of three, she opened two stores, Kids Are People Too and Lois's Corner, which was a safe haven for the youth in the Chicago community. Her endeavors did not end in Chicago. Okay, As well, um, Annette, how about we save that for next month? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to an extended version of Humanity Matters. This is for the internet only version of Humanity Matters. And we are about to have Annette Bernice Mendel do the entire description of our wonderful friend and hero, Flo Rice. And we are also going to show Annette Bernice Mendel, Kathy Payher, myself on, on audio only, and Donna Weiss at the New Eagle Park in New Eagle, PA. So get ready for an extended version of Humanity Matters. And now, Annette Bernice Mendel, if you would be so kind as to give us the Flo Rice Memorial. In love and memory of Lois Floyd Rice. Flo, as she was known to her friends, always saw the, in the talent in people, especially in children. Her journey started as a young child singing in the choir at her church as well as the streets of Chicago. With a strong love for the Lord and a gift of prophecy, even at a young age, Flo saw the beauty in people. She attended Phillips High School and was a majorette and often performed in the Bud Billiken Parade. At the age of 26, she lost her arm working in a plastic factory, but she did not let that keep her from fulfilling her dreams and purpose to empower young people and those around her. As a single mother of three, she opened two stores, Kids Are People Too and Lois's Corner, which was a safe haven for the youth in the Chicago community. Her endeavors did not end in Chicago. As an avid traveler, she took her message and love for children wherever she went, reaching out to young people in many states like California, Ohio, Maryland, New York, and so on. Flo eventually settled in Pennsylvania, but made a home wherever she went. Starting with her grandchildren who knew her as Yady, Flo started a new group called Flo's Kids. She began holding performances and hosting various activities around the community, reaching out to the youth and the elderly. With the help and support of her family, she became a producer at PCTV tw Channel 21 and eventually a member of the board of directors. She has been a savior to many children and adults, and her show, Flo's Kids, has kept many children off the streets and has changed many lives. Flo has received countless awards, including the Excel Award for her show on the homeless. This lifelong learner and educator were an active member and inspiration in such groups like Healthy Start, Generations Together, and Sisters Helping Sisters. She was a minister and prophet and furthered her study in the Lord. Attending the Light of the World Bible Institute. Flo was also the regional director of Rock Registry based in Chicago, Illinois. She was a lifetime daycare provider and also a foster mom. Flo has raised countless children and was a mother to countless more within the community. At sunrise on December 11, 1937, Lois Floyd Rice was born into this world, and on Thursday, April 6, 